How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Movie Night Show. Now, normally on the show, we break down movie news, talk about discussions. Some cool news even broke today. However, today's episode, we're not going to do that. I'm going to save that for next week. On today's episode, we are going to be talking about the potential Oscar nominations. They come out, the official Oscar nominations come out on Monday, March 15th, which I will be doing a reaction to, so don't worry. However, every year I try to predict the nominees and the winners. I'm pretty good at predicting the winners. I'm horrible at predicting nominees, and that's what we're going to be doing today. So if you'll indulge me, and so that we can't wait to see how wrong I am in a couple days, here are my official predictions for the Academy Awards of 2021. Also, it should be noted, I didn't do every single category. Reason being, not that I think... Not that I think that there are categories that aren't as important as others. It's just that there's only a certain number of categories where I participate and know people and just tones and conversations in that subgenre that I can actually attest to, oh, this is what I think will get the nomination. And there are some nominees where I just had to completely guess. And if I had to completely guess on all of the nominees in one of the categories, I left that category out. But all the categories I do read to you, it's because I actually know the conversations in the industry going around what could potentially be nominated, and that is why I'm predicting those nominations. I do have official predictions in the other categories on, like, Gold Derby and whatnot, but talking about them would be a waste because they, they would literally be guesses. So, of all the categories, there are a couple left out, but the ones that I have are because I did full research and breakdowns of what could happen. So, without further ado, here we go. For Best Animated Movie, my official predictions are Soul, Onward, Wolf Walkers, The Croods, A New Age, Over the Moon, and that's it. However, there is one outlier to this, one that could sneak in there, and that could be Trolls World Tour. Although it's not my official pick, maybe it could sneak in there. Um, however, I think the three that are, or I'm, I'm sorry, the four that are locks are Soul, Onward, Wolf Walkers, and The Croods. Maybe Over the Moon could be taken off by Trolls World Tour, we'll have to see. This is a category I was hilariously wrong on last year, so maybe that could happen again, who knows. But yes, those are my predictions for animated feature. Next, we're going to do best visual effects. My predictions for best visual effects are Tenet, The Midnight Sky, Mank, Birds of Prey, and Mulan. I do have one outlier to this, and that is Welcome to Chechenia. Chechenia? I'm sorry, I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. Um, I've heard some conversations within the visual effects community of that potentially getting a nomination. However, it is a documentary, and I don't know if the Academy will give a visual effects Oscar to a documentary. Maybe it's mind-blowing, because I haven't seen it, and maybe that's, it's totally deserved. But I'm thinking of stereotypical Academy voting patterns, even with the added members and new diversity, and I think that they're more likely to vote in categories of traditional movie of like narrative features for visual effects so i'm going to stick to those for now now on to best sound it should be noted normally in the past academy awards sound is split into two categories best sound editing and best sound mixing however this year it's all one category for best sound makes things a little interesting on what to nominate and what not to nominate but regardless this one has a few outliers i think could sneak in there but here are my five official picks sound of metal Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Soul, De Five Bloods, and Tenet. Now, before I get to my outliers, the reason I picked those five are because, well, one, any movies that involve or are about music usually always get sound nominations, hence Sound of Metal, Black Bottom, and Soul. However, the other one that usually gets nominated are more bigger blockbuster movies or bigger, like, action type like Tenet and De Five Bloods. Tenet had horrible sound mixing, but the sound editing was great. And since the two categories are combined into one, that's why I'm predicting it. However, there are a few outliers to this that I think could make it in, and here's what they are. Mank, Greyhound, and News of the World. News of the World um, had some action in it. I didn't see the movie, just from conversations I've had with the people. Mank, it's just one of those movies I think is going to get nominated in a lot of categories, and sound may be no different. And Greyhound could take Tenet's spot because of Tenet's poor sound mixing that might have a negative effect for the sound nomination, and Greyhound could overtake it. So those are the outliers I think could sneak in there, but I'm, I'm still fairly confident in my five choices. Next, we're going to move on to best score. Tenet, Soul, Mank, News of the World, and The Midnight Sky. The only outlier I have here is Minari. I hear that Minari could steal one from News of the World or 
the Midnight Sky. I think uh, the other three are pretty much locks in their categories. Now, Midnight Sky News of the World could not get a nomination because their films have either one, lost serious traction in News of the World's case, or two, just wasn't as critically well received as they'd hoped, like the Midnight Sky. So, Minari could easily take one of those spots, but I, I chose these other categories because I think they might throw Midnight Sky a couple nominations in both score and visual effects, and, you know, just as like a some of us thought it was good, and uh, we'll see it there. And if they're going to give any anything to News of the World, I think it will be score a score nomination. So that's why I picked those five. We'll have to see, though. Next is going to be Best Production Design. Mank, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Tenet, News of the World, and The Midnight Sky. Outliers for this that could easily come in and swoop spots are both Mulan and Emma. I think even Emma could take Midnight Sky. I'm kind of regretting putting that, but I put it. I'm going to stick to it. But, um, yeah, like I said, I think with News of the World and Midnight Sky, there's a couple technical categories that I think they could throw bones to for those films. But all the other ones are locks. Like Mank, Ma Rainey, and Tenet, I believe, are locks in this category. Um, all of those films had phenomenal production design. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see which one comes out of there. I'm fairly confident in all the ones I've said so far. The ones I'm not confident in, I will get to, and I will let you know, trust me. Right, next, we have makeup and hairstyling. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Hillbilly Elegy, Mank, Emma, and Birds of Prey. The only outlier I even see potentially taking one of these nominations is Pinocchio, the uh, foreign version of the film that came out this year, starring Roberto Benigni. That might take Birds of Prey's spot, but right now it's looking like these are the nominations. I base these off of the fact that the makeup and hair division of the Academy, or at least a lot of members in that portion of the Academy, have their own awards, and these were the films that were nominated for those awards, at least most of them. So that's where I kind of formed that from, and hopefully It'll turn out well. I'm pretty confident in this category. However, this next category is one that I am very not confident in my picks, and that is Best Editing. For Best Editing, I have The Trial of the Chicago 7, Nomadland, The Father, Sound of Metal, and Promising Young Woman. Now, I do these picks based off what I think will win, not the, what I think should win, and outliers that I left out are Mank. Mank could easily take any of these for editing, and the other one I have is Tenet, who I also think could take a spot from any of these. The reason why I picked these five, though, is because um, usually, with the exception of one time, and I think the history of the Oscars, whatever movie wins Best Picture is also nominated for Best Editing. And if I had to pick five Best Picture potential nominees, which I'll get to, that have the best chance at winning Best Picture, I think it's this five. So that is why I picked them for editing. However, like I said, Tenet or Mank could get in there and surprise everybody. We'll have to see. Next, we have costume design. My picks are Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Mank, Emma, Mulan, and One Night in Miami. Now, this one also has a couple outliers that could easily sneak in there. And those outliers are The Personal History of David Copperfield, News of the World, and The United States versus Billie Holiday. Now, David Copperfield and Billie Holiday could easily get in this category because they have no huge chances of getting nominated in anything else except for Billie Holiday, which I'll get to in a second. So maybe they throw them a bone in this category. Um, I put News of the World as an outlier because I think it'll still get a couple, as I mentioned before, but it's really lost traction and hasn't really gotten any nominations of the, any of the award shows, really. I think it's between the five I picked, but any of those outliers could take a spot. Like I said, with all the other ones, we are going to have to see what happens. Best Cinematography. Here we go. This one's also kind of tough. Nomadland, Mank, De Five Bloods, Tenet, and Minari. Other outliers I have are News of the World, maybe, but the one that I could come in here and take a spot is Judas and the Black Messiah. That film had beautiful cinematography. I think Nomadland, Mank, and Tenet are the kind of locks here. I think everyone within those industries have had nothing but a nice thing to say about the cinematography in those films. Also, a huge outlier risk could be Malcolm and Marie, but if they nominate Mank, with the way that sometimes it works when you vote for stuff, they're not going to give it to two black and white movies, so it'll probably just be Mank. Uh, Judas and the Black Messiah could easily take one of these spots, probably maybe even Tenet's spot, but uh, right now I think these are the five films that will be nominated for the cinematography. All right, shit's about to get really interesting now. Moving on to Best Original Screenplay. And uh, the only time I'm going to do names is when I get to directors. It's nothing against writers or cinematographers or anything like that. I'm just inherently lazy as a human being. So, Best Original Screenplay. The Trial of the Chicago 7. Promising Young Woman, Mank, Minari, Sound of Metal, 
and that's it. However, I do have an outlier, two outliers. One could be Soul. You know, it's not uncommon for an animated film to get a screenplay nomination, especially with Pixar and Judas and the Black Messiah. I have Judas and the Black Messiah on a lot of outliers because it has picked up traction in the awards season as voting starts to close. Or it might, have, it might have closed now as of this recording. However, I do think that the other five films are more likely to receive nominations. We are now going to move up to Best Adapted Screenplay. Nomadland, One Night in Miami, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, The Father, and for the fourth one, I put I'm Thinking of Ending Things, which was written by Charlie Kaufman. The reason I put that there is because I think that that film didn't get a whole lot of traction, but it did have briefly have a moment when it dropped on Netflix, and Charlie Kaufman is a writer that the Academy loves, so I'm thinking he'll take the fifth spot. There are some other movies that could take that fifth spot, and I'm just not seeing it. However, I think that it is likely that he might receive that fifth nomination, but again, we're going to have to see. Moving on to Best Supporting Actor. Daniel Kaluuya for Judas and the Black Messiah, Sasha Baron Cohen for The Trial of Chicago 7, Leslie Odom Jr. for One Might in Miami, Paul Rashi for Sound of Metal, Chadwick Boseman for De Five Bloods. Now, there are two outliers I think could sneak in and take nominations, and that's Mark Rylance for The Trial of the Chicago 7 and Alan Kim for Minari. Both of those actors have started to recently pick up steam, but I might be too little too late. However, I think the rest of these are pretty much locked. I think Daniel Kaluuya is a lock, Sasha is a lock, and he hasn't been nominated a lot in the recent ones, but I think Paul Rashi is a lock for Sound of Metal. It was a great performance, and I think the Academy is really going to take to that kind of role. Um, so I'm pretty confident in my supporting acting picks. Now we get to Best Supporting Actress. Maria Bakalova for Borat, subsequent movie film. Amanda Seyfried for Mank. Olivia Colman for The Father. Glenn Close for Hillbilly Elegy. I think they will throw her a bone in that. Um, Yu Jon Yon for Minari. I hope I pronounced that right. And the only outlier I could see here potentially taking a nomination, maybe Glenn Close's nomination, is Dominique Fishback for Judas and the Black Messiah. Like I said, that film has picked up a lot of steam towards the end of the voting. And maybe they give this a nomination to her to help boost the chances of that film. We'll have to see. But other than that, again, I am pretty confident in these picks. And I'm very confident in my best actor picks, which are Chadwick Boseman for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Riz Ahmed for Sound of Metal, Anthony Hopkins for The Father, Stephen Yin for Minari, Delroy Lindo for Defy Bloods. The only outlier I have here is for Gary Ullman and Mank, but... <sighs> They better not snub Delroy Lindo, because they have in a lot of the other award shows for nominations, and he was so good. Steven Yen might lose his nomination, because from what I understand in that movie, his performance is more subdued, and they might give that to Gary Oldman, but I, I still think that the five that I said are more likely to happen. I'm very confident in my Best Actor choices. Now we move on to Best Actress. Carrie Mulligan for Promising Young Woman, Frances McDormand for Nomadland, Vanessa Kirby for Pieces of a Woman, Viola Davis for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, and for this choice, a lot of people in, on their list are putting Andre Day for the United States versus Billie Holiday, and I've heard that performance is great, and she might very well get it, but I instead chose Rosamund Pike for I Care A Lot. The only reason for that is because that movie dropped right at the tail end of voting, and it got a lot of buzz for Rosamund Pike, and it started the conversation of her not getting a nomination since Gone Girl. So I think that that might have convinced enough people last minute to give that nomination to her, but outliers, as I said before, Andre Day for the United States versus Billie Holiday. And I even put Zendaya in there for Malcolm and Marie. Because she's a rising star and has been winning a lot of awards recently. And maybe she turned the eyes of the Academy voters in this film as well. And I personally love the film, so I'd love to see her get nominated. Now moving on to Best Director. This one was really, really difficult to predict. Chloe Zhao for Nomadland. Emerald Fennell for Promising Young Woman. Aaron Sorkin, The Trial of the Chicago 7. Lee Isaac Chung for Minari. Regina King, One Night in Miami. The outliers I have are David Fincher for Mank and Darius Martyr for Sound of Metal. Now, I wanted to put Darius Martyr in the picks. However, these are the five that I think are getting the most buzz right now. However, David Fincher for Mank is the typical Academy choice for the typical Academy movie, but with the increased members and the diversity, I don't know if he'll get the nomination, which is why I have him as I stand. The only ones that I feel are locks are Chloe Zhao, Aaron Sorkin, and Emerald Fennell. Lee Isaac Chung and Regina King could easily be flipped out with the outliers that I mentioned. Who knows? It's going to be a tight race, and I look forward to seeing what happens. And now, for the, you know, the crown, Best Picture. Now, as it works this year, Best Picture could have up to 10 nominees, but normally with how the math works, it rarely gets to 10. I'm predicting that there's going to be nine nominations. However, starting next year, 
you have to have 10 nominations again. So next year it'll be 10 no matter what. It could be up to 10. Some people are predicting eight. I think it's going to be nine films. And here are the nine films that I think will be nominated for Best Picture. Nomadland, Sound of Metal, Promising Young Woman, The Trial of the Chicago 7, Minari, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Mank, Judas and the Black Messiah, and One Night in Miami. There aren't even a whole lot of outliers that could sneak in and steal Best Picture spots. I mean, you could add The Father, maybe, but that movie started to lose steam. The only thing that's really held tight with that is Anthony Hopkins and Olivia Colman. So we're going to have to see with that. However, I think there's going to be nine, and I think it will be these nine. What do you guys think? What are your predictions for the Oscars? We're going to find out Monday, and I will have a reaction, as I said before, so I look forward to doing that. Please leave a comment below as to what you think will be nominated, what you think deserve to get nominated, or, you know, what's a movie that I'm completely missing that you think. Dalton, you're crazy for not thinking this is going to get nominations. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.